we're on Glenmore Station in the Mackenzie Basin and this is one of our study sites in the Cass River Delta and we're here to test the concept of chemical camouflage to try and protect native birds from predators. Uh, chemical camouflage is a, a concept of trying to mess with predators' minds, basically. So when, when predators are hunting, uh, food isn't all that abundant out here. They've got to be pretty efficient the way they hunt. So they cue into signals that actually represent food. If they don't represent food, then they tend to put it into the sensory background. They have to in order to be efficient and to feed. So the idea is to provide signals to them that don't have rewards, don't have food rewards. In this case, it's birds. So we're trying to protect birds, but before the birds get here, we put out um, bird odor and the animals seek it out, but they don't get a reward. And the idea is for them to turn them off birds temporarily. It's based on a published study done in, uh, in uh, New South Wales in Australia by Catherine Price and Peter Banks and they did a small, smaller scale study than what we're doing here that actually showed that yet the, the concept actually uh, is more than that. It's, uh, it actually translates to an increase in survival rate of nests. That's with rats in this case. So this here is quite a different system um, and it's the first time it's been tested on the landscape scale. How you apply this stuff on a landscape scale will be something we need to take further if we, if we have success with this project. In this country here, this open country, you would like to use drones ultimately. Uh, how you do it in a forest system it has, it will have its own set of challenges. When we're doing our odour deployment, we've got about 300 odour points to deploy on the CAS and around 400 odour points on the Tekapo. That basically involves wandering around and smearing little bits of Vaseline on rocks. And the Vaseline is impregnated with chicken, quail or gull scent and we're randomising where we put those out. 40 of those points are mon being monitored by camera. So each time we go and redeploy odour we have to move all 40 cameras to a new randomised site. With all the camera photos that we're getting, there's a lot of data to go through, so we've still got a lot more to look through. But we are getting interactions with um, predators, so cats and ferrets and hedgehogs, with the odour that we're putting out. I think we're finding they're showing more interest on the first and second night, so probably by the time it's been out there for three days, it's not really that smelly anymore. Um, we're also getting a lot of really interesting um, shots of hares and rabbits and dotterels and magpies and the odd sheep selfie as well. Our role in this project I guess is to work with the Lankia research staff to monitor a sample of banded dotterel nests on this delta here and th the three other study sites that Lankia research are working on and we'll be comparing the hatching success of a sample of banded dotterel nests between these treatment and non-treatment sites. We need clever new techniques like this I guess to solve you know the problems that our shorebirds are facing I and mean, most of them are still in decline so um, you know, at the moment we can't do enough pest control to reverse those declines. I think this is a very clever idea and it's it's based on some you know quite solid theory and kind of logic so I'm quite hopeful that that, that we'll be able to show a, a difference in nesting success between our treatment and non-treatment sites but um, yeah, I guess, I guess we'll see. My PhD was kind of exploring this idea, taking it from a bit of a crazy idea and seeing if it, we could turn it into something useful. Um, what we found is that if we put odour out for about a week before we actually put quail eggs into those nests, that the rats lost interest. They were really attracted to the smell initially, but then they lost interest after about three or four days. And then the survival of those quail eggs that we subsequently put into those nests was about 62% higher. Um, than in nests which were put out with the odour straight from day one. So it was, it was actually a lot stronger in effect than what we would have predicted. It's a m much more complicated system that we're working with over here. Um, it's a much bigger scale. Um, we're dealing with lots of different predators all operating at different scales um, and, and live prey that not only smell but make sound as well. So it's a challenge but the theory supports that it should work, whether or not it does, who knows, fingers crossed.